Well, good morning, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about the Troy Built TB360 rear wheel drive self propelled 21 inch push mower. Uh, we're going to do a full review on this thing. We're going to talk about the pros, we're going to talk about the cons, uh, how long I've had it, and would I recommend it uh, in the future? What would I purchase in the future? And what things have happened since I've owned it? So, Let's just start right off the bat. Uh, everyone knows me. I'm Dan, and I have a 100 account lawn business. Uh, so it's a pretty decent sized lawn business. This has been my primary push mower since I would say about 14 months ago. 13, 14 months I've had this mower. I purchased this mower for $369 at Lowe's, $369 plus tax. Um, it has mowed, serviced, probably about 450 to 500 yards. A hundred of those yards happen in just a two week time frame. If you go back to my video series and my playlists, two guys and a mower. We did 100 lawns, actually it was like 103 lawns I think, in 10 days two um, Monday through Fridays and we used just this machine and it was just me and a helper um, and that was back in July in the dog days of summer so this thing really really stepped up to the plate at that moment um, but it did put some wear and tear on it and that's what we need to talk about today uh, the wear and tear on these residential style push mowers again $369 at Lowe's. This is not a $700 Honda. This isn't a seven or $800 Snapper or Xmark 21 commercial or anything like that. Okay, this is a homeowner's edition Lowe's purchased Troy Built. <laughs> so there it is. The TB360 21 inch self propelled mower, rear bag, mulch, and side discharge. Okay, so you got the bag attachment, which works great. You, it comes with a side chute, or you can run it in this configuration, which is mulch. I mostly run it in mulch. I do have some videos where I'm side shooting with this mower. It is rear wheel drive, which I prefer because then the front end's not wandering on me on like wet lawns or anything like that. Early morning dew, I find front wheel drive wanders. This rear wheel drive doesn't wander. So I like that. It keeps it moving in a nice, straight, easy line for me. I don't have to concentrate on going straight it stays straight so that's the purpose of rear wheel drive in my opinion that's where I like rear wheel drive over front wheel drive front wheel drive tends to wander on me rear wheel drive stays perfectly straight um, so that's why I purchased rear wheel drive now why did I purchase the TB360 this right here 190 cc motor on a 21 inch deck that's about the most powerful motor you're gonna find is the Briggs and Stratton professional series they call it 190 cc motor I don't care about all this marketing gimmicks I cared about this right there 190 cc's that much power on a 21 inch deck is sure to please and it never let me down this mower went through pure hell for thick tall grass in the summer mulches leaves like a dream the blade does not slow down the vacuum continues for uh, through it all and when you're doing leads you're doing anything like that this machine really really stepped up to the plate and kept it going uh, so very powerful motor very good motor very easy to maintain and we're gonna get into that in just a moment um, it's a lightweight mower uh, it's not like heavy steel and all that so that's a positive it is light so for homeowners um, for smaller people like um, you know women um, small guys or something like that you don't have a lot of room to store you gotta kinda muscle this thing into a corner of your garage or maybe you don't have a garage maybe you got a carport and you need to stick this away and it you know you don't want some big old heavy cumbersome thing this mower is great for that very lightweight very powerful very lightweight and it has a small footprint because you can fold the handles down if you take the red um, those red thumb screws if you take these off you can fold the handle all the way down 
and it's only as big as here to here. So that's awesome. And I that's how I would store it in my lawn trailer. Now, let's talk about some of the really good stuff about this machine. Besides the big old motor, that's awesome. Besides the rear wheel drive, that's awesome. Besides the lightness, that's awesome. Maintenance is extremely easy. You got a wash port right here for your garden hose if you're into that sort of stuff. I'm not. I never wash underneath my deck with a garden hose. If I need to get under my deck, I lift the machine up. Some people don't want to do that, so it does come with this wash port here. Um, next thing is your air filter. Very easy to get to. Screw right here. Undo this screw. Cover comes right off. There's your air filter. Oil comes with a nice dipstick. Easy to read. Great. I was moving this around so there's oil everywhere. Great, easy to get to. The next thing is oil changing. Run the motor for about 30 seconds to warm it all up. Pull your dipstick. Flip the machine on its side like this and drain the oil into your catch. Take your recyclable oil to uh, any auto parts store and they can capture your oil for you and uh, dispose of it properly. And then about a quart of oil tops it right back off. Gas is right here. So your air, your oil, your gas. Spark plugs in the front, very easy to get to. So anybody can get in there and change your spark plug if you need to. And if you ever suspect you got bad gas uh, or dirt in your carburetor, very easy. The bowl is right here. You can pull this bowl super fast with I believe a 10 millimeter or 12 millimeter socket. You could drop this bowl. You got your needle and float right there. You can do your quick cleaning. No problems, no issues. Get it back together. You don't have to take a whole bunch of crap off. So the maintenance on this machine is excellent. Very, very easy to get to. Um, so that's a pro right there as well. Uh, so you got power, rear wheel drive, lightweight, very easy maintenance. Very small footprint if you fold the handle down. Very simple to get to. You got your three options of mowing. You can mulch which most homeowners like to do. You can bag in the spring and fall to pick up your leaves. You can side discharge if you want to get like compost going or something. You can control your clippings with either collecting it in the bag or put your clippings into one area, rake them up, throw them into a compost. Or if you got really thick yards, you can side discharge just to keep it, you know, just to chop it down and you can go back over it and mulch or bag it later if you need to. So that's the great things about this mower. Let's get into the not so great things about this mower. Uh, there's a few of them. Number one, this. Everybody knows you've got the dead man switch right here or the operator presence lever or the control lever, whatever you want to call it. You got to squeeze this in and to fire it up. If you leave the handle, it spring loads back and kills the machine. This cable broke on me. This goes from here and it goes to here. Right there. This cable broke on me after about five or six months of owning this maybe. I bought a new cable, it broke on me again within about three weeks. Don't know what the deal is with that. Not sure why it kept breaking, but that's something that I know will piss a homeowner off for somebody who's not mechanically inclined and capable of doing their own repairs. What I ended up doing to combat this problem I took the spring off of the arm that would otherwise come back this way and you have to squeeze the red handle to pull it this way and I took the spring from here to here off and I went from here and I just have it holding on to the to the wire the cable sheath that actually just goes for the self propulsion down there just to hold this in the on position so the machine is always in the on position if I pull the cord right now it'll fire to turn it off you just take pressure off the spring and see the arm right here moves just as if you let go of the red handle and it turns the motor off. Okay, kind of shitty that this cable broke on me twice so fast, but it did. Um, to me, it's not worth overly complaining about. Not that big of a deal. I have mechanical skills. I can figure stuff out. I figured that out. It works like a champ. That's a, definitely a negative. Also, that means if you reach underneath there right now and spin the blade, and if it's on the compression stroke, you can fire the machine. You can start it. So you have to remember to pull your spark plug, which we discussed is right here in the front, before you um, 
tilt your machine on its side to change the uh, blade out or sharpen the blade. All right, because if you flip that blade right now, that's just the same thing as pulling your starter cord. So you really got to be careful on that. All right, so that's a that's a no no right there. That's a bad bad thing right there that 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 cable broke on me twice. All right, that's number one. Number two, I had to literally weld the deck here and up here and I have a video of that because of dropping it out of the back of my truck the deck is weak this isn't a strong deck and it it cracked the deck here and it cracked the deck here so I had to weld that up alright weak deck that's something you guys really do need to be aware of a weak deck you gotta be careful okay when you're using this for like commercial um, you can really, you know, get yourself caught in a bind there, breaking your deck. Not everybody has access to a welder, so I happen to. So, weak deck, all right? For a homeowner, you'll probably never even know it. Doesn't even matter. Um, I had to change out my, my belt. Um, it's not a big deal to do. You got to take this cover off here. Uh, you got to take the blade off, take this cover off, and then you can see the belt. And then you have to work in the back. Um, behind the chute you have to work back there to change the belt I did change the belt out I did change the blade and the blade adapter out once already um, those kinda went I don't think that blade adapter should have gone out on me so early but it did this right here um, there's nipples here and the nipples on the blade adapter worn down really really fast so it was allowing the blade to spin um, even no matter how tight you made this, it wasn't locking the blade down. So that was kind of yucky. So I bought a new blade adapter and uh, that fixed it. And when I changed the blade adapter, I changed the belt. The belt is ready for a change again. Um, but like I said, after doing the amount of laws that I've done with this, I really can't complain. Uh, so, I, I, you know, the longevity of the belt and the blade adapter seems to be all right. Um, one thing that is not all right and it really is kind of upsetting to me is the bolts that hold the front end on if you look right here here's a bolt a bolt a bolt a bolt a bolt these bolts keep coming loose on me these bolts hold this whole front end on the whole front end of this mower is is bolted into plastic and they keep coming loose and they're starting to strip so it's very difficult you see how they're moving you see that slop right there that slop transfers to your yard and it causes the front of the blade to chop 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 and you end up with these half moon chops in your grass that's from this right here there's nothing I can do with it the only thing I can do is order a new plastic piece and it's twenty two dollars and then you can unbolt this, unbolt the wheel assemblies, put the new plastic piece on with the nice tight plastic, tighten the bolts back down, and then I can't tighten these down anymore. If I do, it's going to strip out the plastic. So for $22, you can repair it. If you're a homeowner, this will probably last you seven years before that happens. But if you're in a commercial business and you're doing, you're using this mower and you're doing three or four hundred yards in a year, with this mower, um, that can go that can go out on you pretty quick. So that's something to think about, something to watch for. Uh, if you're not one who wants to mess with a $22 part and maybe an hour of maintenance, then you go out, you get yourself a Honda Snap or an X Mark for six or seven hundred dollars. I'm just saying, um, maybe a Husqvarna off the shelf as well. Um, you know, it doesn't have this plastic. This has this plastic. Whatever. You know, um, I don't think I would have put plastic there. They did, and I didn't. You know, I didn't think twice about it. The price was right. The rear wheel drive was right. The motor was right. So I gave it a shot, and I have no regrets so far. Just little things, you know, for a residential mower trying to keep up in a commercial business. There are little things that you need to be concerned with: weak deck and stripped out plastic. Just little things to think about. But like I said, you can get this part for twenty-two dollars. Now, you see what just happened? You see that? The wheels do not have bearings, okay? They just have like plastic bushings. This translates to a sloppy cut. 
So when you got this going on with the, the wheel and you got this going on with the deck, it makes for a yucky cut. So you gotta go slow and it's a real pain in the ass. And you start you start um, getting really irritated. So if I were to keep this machine going for the rest of this season, well not season, this season's at an end, but for like the start of next year and through the winter, I would be ordering new front wheels, which these are worn out anyways, and a new front end. If I order a new front end, new front wheels, if I order, well I already have a spare blade belt, but if I, or belt transmission, but if, if I change the belt out um, and sharpen the blade, this mower would be about as good as new for less than 50 bucks, 60 bucks. So this $369 machine, over a year later, over four or 500 yards later, for roughly 50, 60 bucks, well, plus the blade adapter and the belt earlier, so you figure 100 bucks total invested back into it, um, I'd be right back to kicking butt again with this machine because the motor just has not skipped the beat. Um, now, one more thing that's really cool about this machine is it's one lever adjustment for the height. So all you got to do is hold this lever here and the whole mower goes up and down. You don't have to do individual wheels or, or individual axles. So I just did that one-handed. So, I mean, that shows you anybody, uh, a weaker person, you know, whatever, um, can do that quite easily and adjust the height of your machine. So, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Let me show you guys real quick the full model number if I can here. If it'll focus. So there's the model number. One, two, A, B, D, three, eight, Z, seven, one, one. And there's the serial number. Um, 1K, 104K, 20342. Uh, so if you were to buy parts or something, those, those are the numbers that you would need. And then there's the engine model number right there. So it's pretty easy to, to look at. Yeah, those goofballs are arguing over football. Um, so yeah, there you go. So that's the TB360. That's an honest, honest assessment. That's everything that's happened with me with this machine since I've owned it. And as long as I've owned it and the amount of work that it has done, quite remarkable what it has done for $369. I mean, this thing has been pulled out of my truck and bounced off the ground numerous times with old boy. Um, he did it with his truck numerous times. And it really is a fantastic machine. Comes with a two-year warranty. It'd be up to you if you wanted to go ahead and start telling people about you being in a business. But if you bring it to a Troy built service center close to like a Lowe's or whatever, I'm sure that they're going to fix it uh, under warranty. It's got two years unlimited hours because there's no hour meters on these things. Um, and the next thing that you guys are going to ask me, if I had to do it all over again, would I do it all over again? Without a doubt, I would purchase the Troy built TB360 all over again without a doubt without a hesitation I'm almost tempted to go purchase a new one but then again I don't want to because if I put a $22 part on and new front wheels and I change the belt out and we do a little video on how to do that and I show you guys how to do that and we do that I think I could get another year out of this for not even a hundred dollars and keep 269 bucks plus tax in my pocket. So, I kind of want to do that. You know what I'm saying? I kind of, I want to do that just, just to see if we can get another year out. I mean, these things are a dime a dozen at the store. I could buy one off the shelf at any moment. If, if it threw a rod, I can go buy a brand new one. Um, you know, it's not like something I'd have to special order. So, I'm not going to get caught with my pants down, in other words, if I were to purchase if I were to not purchase a new one and this were to break on me week one of season 2017, I'd go get another one like that. Um, but yeah, I would definitely purchase this machine all over again, no questions asked, and uh, put minor things into it to keep it running, definitely. Alright, so... 
that's my honest review of the TB360 made by Choi Build. And I hope I help you guys out.